browsing on the internet and also i have heard you talk on the similar line and it says that every writer should have a voice okay i don't know what my voice is or you have said to <coughs> me find your voice and then we've gotten into another discussion that's why i didn't ask you at that point of time but what is finding your own voice Uh, it's kind of uh, thrown around a lot in creative field. It's kind of a cliche thing that the mentors say to students and never explain what what it is. Uh, when I first came to this uh, idea and all that, I was like, I'm just as unique as the other person. Uh, my condition. subconscious everything is a result of my uh, life experiences so my uh, uh, views and opinions will be unique so what is there to find now but today i look at it in a different way i think that uh, why do we go to books and cinema what go towards slowly it is that in that moment for that limited span of time we want to cut away from the app connect with the life experience and take something is the the primary uh, goal of it would be entertain or passing a bit of time but there are many other those who get into books or cinema uh, are hooked on to stories this is the reason for it they want to take something so that they uh, for that moment they can be that character's life relate with that character identify with it they completely disconnect with their own in those moments but they see a journey of another person and they want to the reason why tell story this is the story or the story as a writer what is our role our job then we can do this story we got that is something that is there maybe for a momentary uh, satisfaction momentary relief from stress or uh, momentary entertainment doesn't matter our job when we say that we are a writer is that engage elevate excite the audience in whichever way possible how can we do that we can only do that if we can do something but in a world where uh, stories have been broken down techniques and rules in what way can we detect so what we say i can think of it you can think something that nobody else can think this is your condition your consciousness your way of looking at it okay uh, i'll give you a simple example uh recently i adopted three lovers we were having a discussion that we were always of an opinion that you know birds should not be caged you remember that now and i said all those theories and all those concepts are valid but at the same time every discussion every situation should be judged based on the context Now, these birds were raised in captivity they had never seen the void 
I could say I'll set them. But am I really doing that? Good. These birds who have not seen the world will go out and probably pray to someone else. Am I serving that purpose? No. By keeping them caged, am I violating my initial belief system that the birds should not be caged? Of course I am. I am violating. But this violation, if it is helping three lives to live a better existence, it's fair. In my opinion, I would say I am doing the wrong with the right intention. So this is my belief system. I don't care about action. I don't care about uh, the repercussions of those ac actions. What I care about intent. If the intent is good, the actions and the repercussions, everything that comes with it is okay for me. Now when I write stories, my characters come from me. That's all. For me, my character's intent has to meet clean. Even if he is a villain, he must have a clear intent of what he or she wants to do in life. And if that intent makes sense in his life, then whatever he does, even if it is wrong for the hero, it is good for me. You understand? So now this is my take on life. Unless I put that in the story, I'm not offering anything new. If I start writing like Stephen King or Dan Brown or Charlie Kaufman or Gulzar, I'm just being another replica. The audience already has them, right? So, how do we find out? The way that I figured out for myself, because the internet always says one line, find your voice. What to do about it is never shared and how do you find So I decided that what if I write an essay which is born after reading facts. That means nobody else would ever read it. In that sense, I don't have to worry about being judged by the world. If that is the case, a dialogue with self, which is a burn after reading kind of essay, would reveal a lot about myself and once it is there on the paper it is up to me whether I accept it or not but I know this is who I am you understand now of course when I first did this exercise dialogue itself I was not ready to accept it and it took me a couple of years to actually uh, go back to the same essay read it again and say yes this was it. Now, once I accepted that, my stories are most dear to me. Before that, I was not able to connect with the stories I wrote myself. Forget the uh, fact that the audience liked it and uh, there were uh, reviews of uh, brilliance and all that. But I personally never liked it. And there were many stories I shared with you that I said it was crap. But now I like them because of what they stand for. I have put my heart and soul into it. Now that is good enough for me. The fate of the book or the fate of the cinema or any project that I do is of course depending upon the audience. I can only assume and prepare for it, put, put in all my efforts in a way that, you know, I meet their expectations, but I cannot guarantee it. So, if I have understood it right, when you said that, what did you say about burn? It's a dialogue with a self uh, and burn after reading essay. So, does that mean that every writer should take up this exercise to find their work? I feel it should. I mean, what is the arm? I mean, what would it take from that? An hour or two? 
okay and if you want to tear it away or burn it doesn't matter no harm done right the only harm that can come from it is that sometimes it will reveal to you something that you are not comfortable with accepting right but that's okay the seed has been sown eventually as you move with life years pass you mature you become wiser and you know the seed has taken shape so i feel personally before we put out a word and say this is my work go read and enjoy take something out of it we should first know who we are and what we are standing up to say otherwise the kind of person i am i will stay seated and never utter a word unless i have something worthwhile to say so should i take up this exercise now and only then i will know my voice because my next question to you was i discussed my stories with you i've discussed both i and like you said you did not like what you wrote first until you did this exercise yourself and then you identified with the stories that initially you didn't like but without being pompous the both the stories that i have written i really like them see what i am saying is i didn't like all of my work okay of course there were stories uh, like uh, till death do us apart which you have read uh, and uh, forever promises are hard to keep those are my favorites of course but then i have also written shitty ones you know now what would you advise to me that i should do is just continue with these two stories or write the burnley essay find my voice and then continue with my stories will the outcome be different see it was different for me okay uh, it changed the uh, i personally initially thought that i want to only write psychological drama or thriller this was when i started i was very clear in my head that i want to write thrillers okay but after i did this i have been able to write many other genre and i today very comfortably say because i have a body of work to show that i'm genre agnostic you give me any genre i'll write because i am not obsessed with genre i am obsessed with words and this is what i discover i am obsessed with the stories i am obsessed with the implications and the effect they have on a human psyche and this i was not clear i thought like any other person uh why not uh, go into this field because this is my favorite field i'm comfortable doing it i'll make a career out of it uh and i uh decided this is my style i'll write this and i had a certain opinion about uh world and uh, government society people life everything and those all opinions were unvetted i didn't knew when i formed those opinions whether they were from my experience or i just absorbed from somewhere else without even analyzing the worth of it when i wrote this i realized i don't have a problem with boundaries uh, like initially when i was writing i wrote from a perspective that i am a very patriotic person like any civilian would feel for his country after the burn after uh, reading and dialogue itself exercise i realized i actually don't care which country i belong where i stay and where i grow up for me it is a piece of land then why was i projecting myself as a patriotic guy i'm a human being i'm not a civilian 
I don't belong to any land, boundary, or nation. I belong to existence and universe. You understand? These very minor, minor things I discovered about myself. And of course, it's very discomforting when you share about yourself. You know, even if you know that you're going to burn it or tear it down and all that, to actually get exposed to something like that. It's like a friend doing an intervention, you know, when you're on a uh, streak of doing wrong things, you know. Friends gather around, they do this. So, instead of relying on anybody else, you do it for yourself. So, I feel it helps. I feel that uh, when you take away the fear of being judged by anybody else, there is a very good chance that you will also take off your mask. And once the mask comes off, the person you are, if you put it out with all honesty in front of your audience, they will like it. Of course, you may not have, uh, not everyone for it, may have a Stephen King kind of popularity or uh, 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 anybody for that matter, Gulzar, Javed, you know, uh, Charles Bukowski. But you will have your audience. Now, if you are very fortunate, you may so to uh, popularity and everything. But irrespective of all that, you will always be comfortable with your right. Since you said that you are genre agnostic and you found this after the exercise that you did. Hmm. But, like for instance, the authors that you referred to, Stephen King, Charles, Bukowski, uh, in for me, David Baldici, mm -hmm. or Nancy Drew, whoever writes Nancy Drew's novel. What is their voice? Because they are, I feel, they are just, they are genre particular. They are not genre. No, no, no. See, you may probably discover that you like horror as a genre. Okay. But you will discover that you like it. It's not what you believe in. Yeah, but that reflects in the work, no? Then because what I'm trying to understand mm -hmm. is I have read your work, though you haven't yet published any of your work, you do write an array of stories, an array of genre, and I have noticed that I've always connected because I like what you write. It makes sense to me. Now, if I take Stephen King, for example, he forever is just writing horror, horror in different situations, but that is his genre. I've never read a Stephen King write romantic novel. Or for that matter, Agatha Christie is only writing detective, but I don't know if Agatha Christie has ever written anything drama or family. So now, have these authors really found their voice? Or are they, or this is their voice and they are just doing no, see, it? Tell you. It tells you who you are, what you like, what you dislike, what you believe. Okay? After knowing how to go about your life, is your choice. Steve, okay. even though you like or as a person, he feels like you know, he's a very simple kid. You know, he, in one of his interviews, he said, and in a very witty way, he remarked, you know, I'm a child who has kept his heart in a jar or something. Very twisted, uh, funny way, but he has a very good sense of humor. That is, that is he, who he is. Of course, because he, he's been typecasted into horror. He's turning out that content, okay? But Stephen King never basically attempted if I am right and as far as I can, I can uh, recollect he's not gotten into screenplay right now. You understand? Even Mario Puzo did it for uh, uh, Coppola, but he only wrote his books. And 
any author who has written a book can help uh, uh, converting it into a screen writing. <coughs> but see, J.K. Rowling went on to from books to came into screen writing and it blocked it. Now we know what J.K. Rowling is capable of in the book sale zone. But when it comes to filming, her film bombed like it. So she didn't understand. Both were different angles. Now, if I were J.K. Rowling, and I knew that I, my love is book writing and my style is book writing, I wouldn't have explored this. Those understanding, those realizations, those wisdom come after you do this dialogue with yourself. Now, Agatha Christie and all that you are saying is making a choice because of what is selling. It's livelihood decision. But that doesn't mean that we are only capable of doing that. <clears throat> I get you. So, voice is, because this is what I thought, that voice is, oh, my voice is romantic, so I will write romance. Or my voice is, like you said, you just wanted to write psychological thrillers. Uh, so that's not voice, basically. So here's the thing. Now, you a very good point. You said that you probably like romantic story and you would like to turn out romantic story. Now, let's say at some stage of your life, someone says, hey, you should write horror. Or I feel uh, while we are talking, you, you have a good sense of uh, humor, you should write comedy. And uh, someone would say that, you know, you should explore horror and thriller because there's a good market for it. If you go into that zone, while you are not being comfortable with that, obviously that work will not shine, right? But if you do those exercises, and you know that that's not my voice, why should I stand there? Then you will focus only on this side, and whatever you will turn out, you will be happy. See, unless you are happy with your content, what is the point in telling to the world, you know, you should watch this or read this or anything? It is never going to come out as uh, confident as you would pretend to, you know. But if you have uh, set forth on this journey and you're putting words, words on paper, you using fiction, whether it is fiction or non-fiction, you are passing an idea from your mind to another mind. The least you would want to do is believe that that, that idea is yours. Otherwise, every other person, you can take that idea from the original source. Why should they come to you? You should be the source of your belief system, your ideas, your values, your conditioning, your subconscious uh, take on life, universe, everything. Only then you stand a chance. This is what I think. No, I completely agree to what you feel, but since it is so new to me, there are many questions in my mind. Basically, that means what I was thinking that the voice is what you write. As in, uh, that content. would be a style. I I think uh, it it would be a style of writing. Like, for example, if you want to write a political story, political thriller, but your style would be satire. Okay, that doesn't make the voice. So we cannot say that. Uh, so this like satire is. My style or some writers? Yeah, uh, style. some writers, uh, there's a feedback and reviews about them. They have a very witty way of saying. Some uh, storytellers, they have a way of uh, making the serious moments of life funny. Those are style. It's not belief system. It doesn't mean that that person would actually laugh when something serious is happening in their life. It's their style of doing so when you say that this is a particular style, we can give a name to a style, satire or comedy or witty, witty or whatever. Uh, but dead can, fan. can we give a name to somebody's voice or no? That is the inner voice. It, it has no name. 
it is you it is a reflection of you right so so i should get this out of my mind that i want to find my voice and give it a particular name that there is no uh, reason for it it is that voice would be your voice my voice that is the only label you can put on you know have you done